All right, so we're inside of Octane here. Now, necessarily, you don't have to necessarily model in Octane. There are times where I do just use standard cycles, which you could easily just come in here, change this back to cycles, and then you can import a image as a background plane, build up whatever you want to build up. And then when you're ready to start shading and getting into your lighting, then you go ahead and fire back up Octane. So don't think you're limited and locked into Octane. But first thing first, we're going to go ahead and add in a plane. And then again, I like to work to real world scale. So obviously if I'm gonna make a keyboard, I'm not gonna make this massive keyboard that's almost bigger than a guy. And I don't know what's wrong with my light over there. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna go ahead and scroll this down to about that size there. I think that can work with that. Now I'm not gonna make a full keyboard here. Again, I'm just gonna make a little quick little thing with about maybe six or seven, eight keys on there. Nothing super elaborate here. It's just, again, to try to get into a workflow of using octane especially when we get to the rendering and lighting so i like that there i'm going to go ahead and hide my guy again and then now working like at this scale here we're at a small real world scale our graph our floor looks like really you know weird so what i like to tend to do is just take the scale all the way down there it is boom now i've got it feels normal to me now to be working at such a small scale cube i'm gonna go more for like one of my my original one that I did. I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into edit mode on this. And I'm gonna jump into my top view, scale this on the Y, just a little bit, just make it a little bit more rectangular, a little bit more keyboard shape size, and kind of extend it on the X. And then what we're gonna do here, I think I like that. So jump back in, and we're just gonna go ahead and extrude on the Z, extrude something up like that. That looks good. And what I'm also going to do here is go ahead and in. Well, you could have that little bit of angle to it if you wanted to. So for example, what I'll do is come over here, grab this face, scale it, actually scale on the Z and just kind of scale it down. Actually, let's go to edge mode, grab this top here, G, Z it down. And then if you want to have that little bit of angle to your keyboard there, you jump back into face mode. I'm going to grab the top here, actually jump out. I'm going to go ahead and press A, apply the scale, jump back into face mode here, press I to inset. Kind of inset that a little bit, something like that. That looks good. Easy and extrude it down. I like to go below and then just slowly bring it up. Make sure we hit Z. Then we lock that there and bring that slowly back to something like that. And we're still protruding G Z up a little bit more, right about there. All right. So that's looking like pretty good. So then from here, let's just go ahead and add in some keys. I'm just going to press face mode again. And actually, just bring in a new whole plane here. I'm going to grab another plane, mesh plane, scroll it down. I'm going to tab into edit mode so we don't have to apply it and just scale it down. Something like that. G back to object mode. G Z it up. OK, now that's pretty massive. Let's go to the top view and let's just go ahead and scale this down to whatever size you want for your keyboard. I'm going to do, you know, kind of just going for like a low poly. I'm not going for super high detail. I think I like that. And then what I'm going to do on this one here, tab into edit mode, and we're just going to extrude it down, extrude Z, extrude, and actually I don't have to press Z, it's already ready to go. Maybe something like that. Again, we're, we're not, it doesn't have to be rocket science here. Let me go to the front view, make sure that is straight. That is straight, good. It's good to have reference images open. The first original one I did, I did have references open on my side screens here. Uh, this is maybe the fourth time I've already made this, so I kind of know what I'm going for here. So again, on our keyboard, uh, we want to have that little bit of uh, that shape here. So I'm going to grab this top and just kind of scale it in a little bit like that. That looks cool. And then what we're going to do is add some loop cuts in here. Press control R and I'm going to start off with maybe like six, three, four, five, six. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to go six here again. Go R up, oh, undo that first, select those go R six again three, four, five six all right those are pretty much set and then i guess we could give some a uh, little bit of subdivision to these guys here on the side too i'm gonna do probably about the same cut six all right got that going matter of fact just for a moment here i'm gonna hide this because it feels like i'm getting some is that sitting straight that is perfectly parallel right that is good actually we're gonna go back to that front view i'm gonna tab in here to vertex and then i'm gonna press o for proportional editing and then what I want to do is go to face mode. I'm going to grab this middle one right there and I'm going to go G and we're going to just mouse scroll your wheel down or scroll it up, up or down. There it is. Boom. There it is. Actually, I'm going to de cancel that. Let me go back into the front view, front view. And I want to select all these guys here on the top. 
I'm actually, no, I don't. I just want to select this front, front view. And then what I want to do is go G and just pull it down a little bit. GZ for our finger, that little contour on the right. Like that. And that might be a little bit too deep. Let's go GZ up just a little bit. I like that. Boom. Okay. Shade, auto shade smooth. And that's looking cool. Now you could come underneath here and also inset this in, you know, for example, I can just come in here and grab all of these guys here. Or matter of fact, just press C, right? We could do that. And then just go E extrude Z up, just up inside there, right? It doesn't matter. It depends on how detailed you want it. Okay, boom. And then make sure shade auto smooth on. There we go. It's nice and smooth. We can give this some uh, bevel on the edges here. I'm going to add a bevel modifier, right? Give it about two, maybe three. Bring this edge down here like that. We can always change it later, right? Okay, then press Alt backslash to unhide that. Thought it was Alt backslash. I'll just turn it back on over here. Bink, there it is. Okay, so now let's try to, you know, line these up here with our keyboard. Actually, maybe if I go ahead and add a bevel on this again, go ahead and apply the scale and add a bevel modifier on that. Boom, there it is. Also, auto shade smooth. Give it about, what do we give? Three cuts on the other one. Let's find like a good bevelness to it. Looks pretty good, huh? Good. All right, I like that. Matter of fact, I could just match it and just come in here and copy space, paste that. And I will change my profile or actually geometry to meter out here, turn that to arc just to get these corners a little bit better. And it does look a little bit soft here. Let me go with a two, maybe two. Yeah, let's just leave it three. No biggie. Good. So, what I want to do from here now is get the keys lined up inside there. And what I do is come in here, go to snap, and then click on here, go to faces. Actually, I think I actually went to face. Was it project of individual element? I don't think it was this one. GZ. I don't think it was. I think it was this one. GZ. There it is. Yeah, boom. Okay. So now we got it sitting inside there. That looks cool. Let's go to the top view, turn off our snapping, and just G. And I'm going to grab this to like where I want it to be. That looks good. And then it's still a little bit too low now. So I'm going to go GZ it up. That was just to get us in the right ballpark. You can probably go higher, right? GZ, depending on how you want your keyboard to sit. And matter of fact, what I should have did was go back to front view and let's go GZ this up here. I should put that origin point at the bottom there just to really help us set that up. So tab into that, select face, select all, GZ that up and just get that the origin point down at the bottom like that. Tab back out. Okay, now let's go ahead and re-snap that and GZ. There it is. Boom. It's sitting on the bottom. Good. Now I could make this bigger. I think we're going to go bigger. Turn off my snap. Scale that up a little bit. I think I like that G exit over. Sitting up above a little bit. Good. Now we just add a modifier on here. We're going to add in a ray modifier. Let's go to Z top view. Can't remember if that has to be above the bubble. I think it does. Doesn't really matter. And let's just get a little bit of our spacing in between their keys. A little bit more, right? Like something like that. Just add another one. Boom, boom. Boom, however many you want. We could get, how many is that? That means we'll have to make them smaller. Or actually, check it out. Just grab this, tab into this, go to face mode, or actually just go to vertex mode. Let's go to vert vertices, and I'm going to select the x-ray mode, go to the top, grab all of them, G, X, and just slide that over, something like that. Good, shift out of there. Grab our keys now. I'm gonna go G, Y, Bring my keys down just a little bit and the spacing is a little bit off on gx let's kind of center that up a little bit more something like that probably could add a little bit more spacing out here something like that all right boom and now what we're going to do is duplicate this uh duplicate and i'm gonna copy this value there put zero on that put it on the y okay and we don't need six and matter of fact just put a minus sign here in the front or positive depending on what your your is going at i'm gonna put a minus sign and then add the count back boom boom there it is we got three keys look at that nice that's cool right so what i like to do here is give our quickly name it uh we got keys and then here board <laughs> boom so we got this part set up here and on the next one we'll break out how we want to do the projection of the materials a little bit more fine detail on it